Hello and welcome. You're joining the movement for a female-led society. I am T. Erica Patterson, the founder of our new female-led society, and I am going to initiate this transition. So welcome to our cool podcast. <laughs> uh, during this podcast, I want to explain some of my values and principles and reasonings for initiating a female-led society. My number one reason is to create a society that enjoys world peace. I believe that if we enjoy our female-led society, we will also enjoy world peace because the feminine principles running our world and having the wisdom of women running our world, I believe that that's exactly what we need in order to reshape our society into our own utopia. And I believe it can happen in our lifetime, not in 300 years. If you want to join, visit org. Make sure you subscribe to our newsletter and show active support for what is happening. So here we are. Today, I saw an interesting article on Business Insider. Was it? Make sure. Yep. Business Insider. It was talking about um, how Henry Ford built a utopian city, his own society in Brazil. And the society was called Fordlandia. <laughs> That's an odd name, of course. That's a really odd name. But I really was really fascinated by this article because it detailed how this this automotive giant, if you don't know who Henry Ford is, he is the creator of Ford Motors, you know, one of the premier car companies in the United States. So he was in charge of this amazing venture here. And of course, when he's building all of his cars and he has this big old um, operation here, he needs rubber for his tires. So where did he get his rubber from? Well, at the time, Brazil was the main manufacturer of rubber because rubber was produced from rubber seeds and rubber pl- which grew into rubber plants. So Brazil dominated the rubber industry because they had all of the seeds and all of the plants there. So they were supplying the world with this rubber needs. Somehow a man went to Brazil and stole some of those seeds and he was from Britain and he took those seeds and he took them back to Britain with him and he planted them and he nurtured them and he created his own harvest of rubber and they took over the operation from Brazil and they became the 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 giant of producing rubber. So Henry Ford didn't really like that. I guess he had some kind of special deal with Brazil because, you know, he was the number one maker of automotives in the United States. So he probably had a good trade deal and he decided that he was going to take his power back. So he decided to go to the Amazon, clear out a patch of land. He purchased it from Brazil, cleared out a patch of land and decided to grow his own rubber. So he'll never have to ask anybody for permission for rubber again or have to buy any rubber from Britain, which he because he was mad at Britain. And why would you come and mess up what I have going on? So that's a pretty good idea. If you're an enterprising person and you have the means to produce the things you need to keep your operation running, why don't you try it? So he did that. He went out and, and, and recruited people to go and clear the land and plant the seeds for the rubber and cultivate it and, you know, try to let it grow. But also, since it was a rural area, the people there, the people who were working there, they had to live there. So in addition to his plant, you know, of and his his um, production of, of rubber that he was working on, he had to create a town for them to live in. Now, this is where it gets interesting, and I I bring this up today because as I was reading this story, I was fascinated by what it is that caused him to create the town, how he organized the town or the society, and what happened as a result of it. And since I am in the process of organizing uh, our new female-led society, and I've laid out my best plans in the book, A Manifesto for a Female-Led Society, which is available right now on Amazon, I am comparing myself to what he's doing and trying to make sure that I have well thought out ideas and I avoid the pitfalls that he made. So in the end, I'll just tell you the end result. His society failed. His society failed. One of the reasons why his society failed, of course, it really had nothing to do with his ideas, but. The rubber plants that he was trying to grow, they didn't prosper for some reason, even though the rubber 
plants were native to Brazil, the soil that he was trying to use to grow it wasn't taking well to the plant. So the plants weren't growing. Also, somebody invented synthetic rubber, which kind of made his whole thing useless. But, you know, he tried. And I always love to study great leaders in history to see what they did. And even if they fail, there's something in there that I can learn from what they did that will make me better or that will that I can imitate because they did something right. So everybody who's even gotten a shot at what at creating what they want in the world, they did something right. So his in the end, his, in the end, his town failed. It's a ghost town today. But let's talk about some of the 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 tactics he implemented in the in his social structure. So this was back in the early 1920s. So you know we don't have a lot of the luxuries that we have today. So he needed workers to work in his his town. So he imported workers from the U.S. and then he recruited indigenous people of Brazil to join in, giving everybody housing, health care and jobs. He was taking care of them because they were there working for him. So there were other problems, of course, that came along because he created a culture for his society based on his personal ideas like He was saying everybody's going to be vegetarian. There'll be no alcohol or prostitution. Like he made up these rules saying that they would have to live by them because he felt that it was right. But he didn't consider the people who were already living there. So that would be me like going to overtake somebody's country and then totally taking away all of their customs. Like, why would I do that? You're living a certain way. You're enjoying it. You feel proud of the of the culture that you've created. Why would I go in and force you to live by my ideals as though my ideals should be universal for everyone? There should be certain morals, you know, standards that are universal, of course. And I've definitely out, outlined them in a manifesto for a female led society. Outside of that, we are free to live how we want to live and celebrate life the way we want to celebrate life. This is not going to be some kind of robot, you know, town where everybody has to think alike and be alike. That's that's not how our new female led society is going to be at all. So I think that that was his problem, thinking that he had it right in his mind. And everybody in his society needed to live just like him. And I'm just here to let you know, I don't think that, you know, I know how I like to live, but I like variety. I like seeing other people making different choices, living in different cultures. I like trying out different things and learning from other people. So I would never overtake someone's culture and erase it because I think that since I am the ruler and I am in charge, then it should be my way. No, certain things should be the way that I think. That's the overall organization of the society. But the details are up to the people because they have to live out their lives every day. And I can't dictate how they would run and manage their homes and manage their minds and manage their the way they celebrate themselves. That's just silly and it's not beneficial. And I know it would be detrimental to the new female led society. Another thing that he did was he created the basics for living. He gave them food, clothing, shelter. He gave them a little golf course for some recreation. He gave them a a dance hall for square dancing. But he didn't attend to the emotional and social needs of his residents. Like um, in the article, it talked about how the wives were bored. The wives of the workers were bored. They didn't have anything to do in this little town. He didn't Get in there and find out what would satisfy them, what would make them happy. What are women in other parts of the country doing to create a satisfying culture, cultural experience for themselves? He just get on the basis and was like, y'all play golf. <laughs> you guys go square dance. Like, how are you just going to assign people recreation? And it was interesting is he also told them no alcohol or no prostitution. And guess what they did? They went and found a place outside of their town and they created a bar and a brothel so they can do whatever they wanted to do there because they still had those inklings and he couldn't control them from leaving for a night or on the weekends. So they still went and did it. So you can't go to a people and tell them that their natural desires are forbidden, especially if it's not killing anybody for them to do it, you know, to me, sex workers are workers. Sex work is work. I don't think that there should be any shame in it. If that's what you're going to do with your life and you earning your money and you're doing it safely, you need to have a safe place to do it. 
You know, if alcohol is a part of your life, if you're not driving, if you're not being abusive, if you want to enjoy some wine and some spirits, I don't see any problem with doing that. There's no way that I could tell people never, especially if you've been introduced to it before. I could see if you're a brand new baby, and you don't know about it, then I would say, okay, well, maybe we shouldn't introduce it into their lives. But if it's a part of your grown adult life, how am I going to dictate that you can't enjoy it like this is in jail but he tried to do that in his society well he did do that in society and of course people were rebelling what else um he created a town built around production for his profit that was to me it it was backwards so you know how in our current society everything is based on capitalism um the pursuit of money and the more money you make the more power you can get even if your tactics for making money are um, not noble, you know, you can still gain the power. Even if you're not smart and you just come up with some silly idea that makes you some money, you can still gain power. You And the things you do with that power may not be beneficial to our society. He's not thinking about that here. He's thinking about, I need to make sure that um, I'm not dominated by Brit- the Britain company who owns all the rubber now. I want to take my own power back and produce my own thing. So I'm going to create my own thing and I'm going to make all these people uproot their lives and live in accordance to making my dream of me continuing to be a superpower in my country. I'm going to make these people in another country support my idea of staying on top in my country. You see how he just did all that for his benefit? He created a new society to benefit him. And these are real life, living, breathing people with ideas, dreams, goals and their own preferences for their lives. But because they have to create a livelihood for themselves, because we live in a capitalistic society, they all need to work. They all need to eat. They had to go in. Well, some of them chose to, but they were inclined to go in and participate in his dream. But his dream ultimately only benefited him. That was his idea to become a superpower. That was what he wanted. And he built all this around that. And I don't think that that is a great way to begin a society. Trying to make sure that the people who are um, involved are promoting your goals and your ideas and and making sure ensuring that you stay on top. I think that that's sad. And it, it is setting them up for failure, which, it, of course, it did fail, but it was a good try on his part. And it taught me what not to do. The last point I want to bring up about why Henry Ford's society, Fordlandia, <laughs> which is in Brazil, failed was guess what? You won't believe this. All this organizing and things that he did, a new hospital, new school, um, housing for people, all of the social structure and the social projects that he had going on there to support his goal of remaining the superpower in the automotive industry in the U.S. He never went to Fordlandia. This article said he never set foot over there. He was just orchestrating it from his home in the U.S. Like, okay, well, tell him to do this. Tell him to do that. Like, they were little pawns and little ants. Can you imagine that someone who is overseeing your life and your livelihood does not even consider it important enough to show up and see what he's creating? How disgusting is that? How dare you look at people as though they're just pawns in your game to remain on top? I find that appalling and I'm glad that his society failed. Of course, the people rebelled. Of course, they started burning things down. Of course, they started standing not going to work. Of course, it just all fell apart in the end because all of his motives were wrong. If we're going to create a new society, we have to create a society based on the goal of the prosperity and the progress of the people sincerely you have to have a leader who does not need to win does not need power and admiration from others does not need validation that knows how to be alone that knows how to lose that knows how to say i'm sorry that knows how to say hey i messed up but let's make this right That doesn't have to win all the time. 
Someone who can walk in there and say, this is the best decision, even if this decision does not benefit me personally. This is the only way that we're going to create a society that we can be proud of, that we can feel safe in. That we can all grow from, that we can be, that we can be free to be. That's the only way we'll do it. And that's the type of society that I'm creating and I'm advocating for, for our new female-led society. I am T. Erica Patterson, the founder of our new female-led society. And I want you to join me in creating something that is going to be the marker for a new era in our human existence. This is not a fantasy. This is not science fiction. This is not something that's just a fleeting thought. This is real. This is happening right now as you're listening to it. And you have the opportunity to be a part of it, to put your name in it, to stand up for it, to stand up with it, to make it happen, to watch it happen, and to know you are a part of making it happen. Stand with me. Don't doubt yourself. Don't doubt what is happening. Stand with me if it feels good to your soul. Visit FemaleLearSociety.org. Subscribe. Make a donation. Pledge your, your leadership. Pledge your time. Spread the word. Do something active that shows that you are ready for real change. You're ready for a real leader. You're ready for a real plan. You're ready for a real society where you can sleep at night knowing that you are not going to be disturbed and distressed and deserted. I am Tierica Patterson. Thank you so much to list, for listening to our Movement for a Female-Led Society. I hope to chat with you soon.